Change is good. If you've been around me long enough, there are some of you guys that are interns that don't know me at all. There are some people at, at Golly that have known me probably for at least close to half my life. But, um, you know, where I think I've become famous for changing my mind, and I think I've probably pissed more people off because I changed my mind so much. My friend Alan Cosgrove always makes me feel better because his thing is, you know, nobody should get punished for learning. The reason that we're changing our mind is because we're, you know, someone is showing us something that's superior to what you were doing previously. I had this conversation with Sam the other day about the idea that, you know, when someone comes along and says, okay, this is a better idea, what a lot, what the people that I encounter a lot of times will say, yeah, but this is how I do it. And I'm like, oh, I understand that's how you do it. What I'm telling you is this is a better idea. And they usually go, yeah, but this, we do it this way. And when I realized, as soon as I get into that conversation with somebody, I realized this is a pointless conversation because they don't want to change, they don't want to learn, they like what they do, and they're comfortable in what they do. I look at stuff and I never think, well, this is how we do it. I look at it and think, are we doing it the best way you could possibly do it? And that's a lot of what this is going to come to today in terms of the changes that we make are because, generally speaking, somebody smarter than me comes along and says, there is a better way to do this. You know, be it Stuart McGill or, you know, there's a lot of people, I think, who wander into the picture. You know, Michel Dalcourt's name will come up. There's a lot of guys whose names will come up who give you little tidbits of stuff and say, this is better than what you're doing right now. And they don't say it that way. They don't walk up and say, they just do their lecture. You sit there, you absorb their lecture, and the end product of the lecture is, okay, that's better than what we're doing right now. We need to change that as opposed to try to find a defense for what we're doing. And it's amazing how many people spend so much time trying to defend, well, you know, well this is how we do it. There is no, when I look at this stuff, one of the things that you can be certain of is there is no, this is how we do it. You know, what we've been doing has been sort of morphing the whole time into what you hope eventually becomes the best way to do it. I mean, is there a best way? Will there be a best way? Probably not. But if you don't keep looking, then you become like everybody else. I mean, it's amazing when you watch what some people are doing. And I think sometimes in some ways, and these are the statements that get me in trouble when people read this, but like I look at college football strength and conditioning and think it's going backwards. You know, when I look at some of the, you know, the links that I see posted and some of the stuff that I watch, I think, wow, it's almost regressive in nature in terms of it's getting, like, uglier. You know, we watched some things the other day with Tendo units, and it was horrific, the things that they were saying were exercises done with Tendo units. I was like, I, I watched the clips, and I won't say the school, but I was dumbfounded that someone would ever video their athletes doing something like that and then post it on the Internet. You know, and it just shows me that... Obviously, they don't know because they were looking at that. They thought it was a good demonstration, and I thought it was an abysmal abuse of an expensive piece of equipment. I wish I could show it, but I won't. Um, not young enough to know everything. I'm going to be this by the time this comes out. Actually, you're pretty close. I'll be 50. So, uh, you know, but I'm still at this point of realizing that you know it's amazing. Most of the people that you run into who know everything are generally between 19 and 24. Generally in college, usually they've like read their first book, and you feel like seeing some of these young kids, and be like, oh, you read your first book, that's so cool. You know, now you understand everything about strength and conditioning, that's awesome. You know, you read the essentials text, wow. You know, that's really good, that was written like in the 50s. <laughs> it's all coming back into date. But, um, you know, it is amazing to realize that, and then as people get a little smarter, they start looking at you and going, oh, yeah, yeah, I understand why you do that now. And it's like, yeah, because you were like in second grade and you thought you were a doctor, you know. And it's like that's how a lot of these people are in strength and conditioning now. You know, they're in second grade and they think that they're, you know, finished medical school. And then as they start to move into like sixth grade, they're like, oh, wow, a lot of stuff. And you got to know like the anatomy stuff, right? It's like, yeah, you got to know the anatomy stuff. That'll, that'll help a lot with this.